Now, key word there, desired. I'm glad you mentioned that, doctor. Desired. You didn't say how many months of coaching is required to pass the USMLE. That shows you've thought of this before. You've, you've, you've put some mind into it that the question is not about passing. The question is not about passing, the question of desired score. Now that depends on what field. You know, sometimes I ask students, um, IMGs, international graduates, they come to me and say, Doc, I, I, want, I want to do surgery. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this. And I said, whoa, hold your horses. You're jumping the gun. The first question you need to ask is, what score do I need to get? And how can I get that score? Which is what the good doctor is asking. And for me, a desired score depends on what field you're going into. So each field requires a different for, for application. All right, let's say internal medicine. Let's start with the, the median line. The last couple of years, the mean USMLE score has been about 215, 220. I think you know that for the step one. The step one has been about 215 to 220. That's the mean. This is where under this, you will, let's say the average student, but I, I'd like, because we are coming as IMGs, we are coming from, you know, from different countries, we want to be better than the mean. So for example, if you're going to do internal medicine three years, and then later on, you're going to go into cardiology and the various branches of internal medicine, but to apply for, you're not applying for cardiology, you're applying for internal medicine. So therefore, to give an example, you want to score at least more than 225 you want to be above the mean for example this is internal med for example if you want to do radiology you'll have to score more than 240 so if you want to do pediatrics you can be at the mean if you want to do family practice you can be at the mean but it's always better to be above the mean no matter what even if you're going to do pediatrics, family practice, or internal medicine. So the cutoff line is this. You, your first initial goal is, I've got to be above the mean. Now, let's say I always challenge my students. I always say, I teach so that you can get here. Uh, this is 240. More than 240. That's your goal. I want to get more than 240. And it's good to, I, when, I, when I tell students of, of a study plan, how to write a study plan, every study plan starts with an objective. What's my objective in the exam? I said, okay, your first objective, this is where you're going. Now the question is, how do you get there? And one of the answers, the, the one question the good doctor asked is how long? Now that's, that's a question that I can't ask because I don't know how many, how many hours a day you can study. I don't know where is your baseline in terms of the basic science. So these are all unknowns to me. So for me to say three months, six months, I'm unfair to you. And basically I am what I call uh, statistically challenged because I don't have these variables. Now, if you take, I always tell students in the beginning to take an evaluation exam. If you want me to tell you how long and how much and what you need to do. At first thing I tell them, give me, I need to, like a patient comes in, never see the patient before. The first thing I do is baseline, baseline labs, baseline blood pressure, base. I must have these baselines. So if I'm gonna see him again, I can compare him to the baseline to see whether my treatment is improving him or he's getting worse. So I need a baseline. So, where do I tell students to go get that baseline? The most important for me is the NBME exams. And I always tell students, start your study by have many exams, but doing test number 15. Now this is serious business here, all right? Other than that, I'm guessing and you're guessing. And we're all guessing. I can say, oh, it will take six months. 
But what was my basis of saying six months? Did I put numbers in a mental bag and pull out six months? I found I'm going with this doctor. So I want to be real with you and, and, and based on science, not emotions. So let me go out on a limb now. And let's say you said you're, uh, you, that means you already graduated. Okay. All right. Let me assume you can spend four or more hours preparing for this exam per day. That's my assumption. If you already graduated, are you working? How many hours? Okay, I don't know, but assuming you can spend four or more hours, I'm going to go on a limb. And this is here. There is there is a lot of question marks. All right. I'm I'm assuming you're av average and above student. I'm assuming that you can spend four hours a day. All right. Based on that. I will say six months, but I want to tell you, I'm making a lot of assumptions. Okay, so, um, but if, if you want me to be scientific, show me this result and I'll tell you exactly how much time you need and what you need to do. And that's what I do with my students. I said, go do the test number 15, bring the results, show it to me, where I am, and if you take that test, because I might not be able to see you, it, it, it will divide you into three categories. You're at, in the USMLE score digit, you're less than 190. You're between 190 and 220. You, you're greater than 220. This approach is very scientific. There's no room for emotions. If you're here, because your goal is to get to 240 as close as possible, not to pass the exam. So all of this is based on getting to the objective, desired score. If you're there and you can study four or so hours a day, this is where I will say six months. If you're here knocking at the door of the mean, and again, you can study four hours or more a day, right if you are between 190 and, and 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 220 this is where i'll say take three to four months here you're above the mean already because you were studying before this i will say now you start to focus in and i will say one to two months this is my general guideline 